Hello everyone, my name is Polly and welcome back to another edition of Dunes of Utapau. We are here as always with uh, Charles Smith and Mark Location. We are not joined by Chris Tewson for obvious reasons. Uh, actually not, I mean yeah, I don't know. Anyway, but we are also joined by our prestigious guest, uh, District Attorney, Prosecutor, Dude, Chris, not Chris, uh, to, uh, <laughs> fuck, Corey Wadsworth Von Karma. What just happened? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have too many titles that buddy just couldn't process them. All. It wasn't even the titles, it was the name that I had forgotten. Yeah. My name is now Chris. If you ever Chris, forget yeah. his name, just play the theme song. God, what, is, no. what is the theme song? <laughs> Can I play it? Uh... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is... Oh, man. This is, this is primo. It's okay. It's happening. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, no. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh! I'm more copyright stuff. <laughs> that is what happened. <laughs> it was worth it though. But yeah. So how does everyone's week been? <laughs> I'm worried. I'm worried about the dangerous precedent we're setting by playing the Corey the House theme song. <laughs> yep, that's definitely a worry to have. Marshall, how was your week? Uh, my week was really good. Yeah. Um, I'm going to Germany in uh, six days. Seven days. <laughs> seven days. So that's a lot of fun. Seven days. Seven days. Oh, uh, are you going to be able to upload before you go? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. The one that we do on Thursday. Yeah, I can, I can upload yeah. that one. Yeah, cool. I can publish it, so don't worry about that. Yeah. I mean, if you want, I can schedule it for you. I mean, would you... Nah, I'll, I'll do it. It's fine. I should do something with this series. It is on my channel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing very good, thank you. Good. Right. Let's get back to, you know, real music. What are you saying? That felt really okay. aggressive. No, no. Why would why would it be aggressive? Like Corey in the house isn't real music. Well. No. <laughs> so we finished off last episode. I love that, I love um, that noise. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone roll destiny while I um while I uh set the scene today. So we finished off last episode in your accommodation very swanky utalex complex on the north side of the dawn draft station which we now have a map for um and you had captured a mandalorian street thug but this was the middle of the night you've been ambushed in the middle of the night so you guys uh, after the battle is over after the you check the locks on the doors make sure everything's closed and properly secured again um you you, you take a few turns of watching but but you do try to finish up the night you do actually get some sleep uh, unless anybody's opposed to that, and you uh, you get back in the morning and you all reconvene at the uh, the location of your prisoner um, to talk to him. But before you do, Charles, you are uh, troubled in your sleep by uh, by by some some dreams that that you remember as you wake up. So um, I'll describe that briefly. You you find yourself on this barren planet you find yourself on on a barren wasteland of, of gray and, and and blue and you know dark blue skies and you find yourself watching a, kind of a military barricade some soldiers behind it one of which you recognize a woman holding a lightsaber you know so you, you watch as these these soldiers fight and, sh and shoot across the barren wasteland but you see coming over the sky a shell heading towards this exact encampment. Oh gosh. <laughs> what woman Do, was it? What, which wo woman was it? 
uh, you, like, it's, it's very hazy for you. It's hard for you to tell. Do you want to roll a um, average discipline check to see if you can figure it out? Sure. Clearly the appropriate music for this, because you guys are still, you know, physically on the Dawn Draft Station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the Dawn Draft Station theme. You channel your emotions, your passion to figure it out. You gain to conflict in doing so, but you manage to work out that you are in fact looking at Anna. Oh, sh- Oh, your sister. I forgot about her. Hmm. Oh, shit. <laughs> Edric forgot about her too. Do you know what happened to her in the Mandalorian Wars? I I have an idea what happened. It might have changed now, but he's got a hold of it. But <laughs> but <laughs> you do anything? Uh, can I see what she's doing? Like, she seems to be I... commanding, uh, telling people to go certain places. She doesn't notice the shell. It's quickly a portrait. You try warning her. I, I'm just gonna try and grab her and move her out of the way, away You're from the shell. You're walking towards her. But you find yourself stopped almost like by an invisible wall, a presence of some sort. After a while, you find yourself unable to move at all. You find yourself tied, maybe bound, helpless. You, there's nothing you can do as the shell lands and destruction is caused in its wake. You're consumed by your anger and your hatred. As you wake up in a cold sweat, you gain five conflict. Immediately <laughs> head with everyone else to the drawing room where you have a captive Mandalorian person. You're all awakened together. Oh, you all recover all your strain um, and one wound. And I recover two, I'm guessing, because of my Mandalorian, or not my Mandalorian, my uh, Trandoshan recovery uh, ability thing. Sounds good. Sure is good to be a Trandoshan. Currently, you've got the, um, the, the Mandalorian prisoner sat on a chair. His hands aren't tied, you don't really have any equipment for that, but he hasn't given you trouble all night. Um, you said we're getting uh, one more wound, right? One wound, yeah. Okay. And his mouth is, uh, is gagged. Not gagged, really, but it's got like a... Um, Got like a a, cur- a mini curtain that was in the kitchen over it. <laughs> like, you can still hear him if he if he wanted to talk, but it would be distorted. So, I start making breakfast. Okay. Uh, there's meat. More oh, meat. Oh, you don't trust you don't trust Celeste with Not making even food a anymore. Little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and Celeste walks up to you and says, "Oh." I can make something if you'd like. It's okay. I already got here first. That's just. And I just like. (laughs) I get get really awkward and just make the food. Okay. I guess I'll go break a finger or two of the prisoner we have. Maybe. Maybe don't start with breaking fingers. I'm thinking we feed him breakfast. I like breaking fingers better. I have a method. Fingers, toes, then waterboarding, Here's and if the- all that... <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Here's the thing. That sort of grotesque torture might work on some people, but I feel that Mandalorians pride themselves on both their pain tolerance and their inability to give in to authority. I think it'd be much more effective for us to simply treat him with respect, kindness, and he might tell us... Why he's here. You know, that might be true, but I do find it fun to do this <laughs> in Mandalorians. <laughs> I say, I'll tell you what, Celeste. After I give him the good cop treatment, and he doesn't tell us 
if he doesn't tell us where he's from, maybe you can get a little rough with him. But you still can't kill him. Gotcha? Why would I kill him if I want the information from him? I don't know. This seems like you're doing it mainly for fun. <laughs> you said three times, I just want to have fun. Oh, girls just want to have fun. <laughs> oh, oh, Sless just wants to have fun. I can't it's enjoy it's my life. <laughs> I, I say, I can't enjoy my work. Well, the working day is done. Oh, Sless. He wants to have fun. But seriously, buddy, if we're ever in the same city, we need to go to a karaoke bar together. <laughs> anyway. And we need to start with for the longest time. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, anyway. Um, uh, so. Well, I'm still going to see what I can get out of the prisoner. I'm not going to torture him, maybe. <laughs> and I begin to walk over to him. Oh, no. Respect! His eyes, I, his eyes I, meet yours. I say... I, I pull up a chair. I'm assuming... Uh, how is he tied up? How did no, we he's tie him up? up. He's oh. sitting on the chair. Oh, what a... Okay, also, I, I look... I, I wave um, Charles over real quick. Cedric? Hey, here's Charles. Bye. The butler. He says, Oh, hello, young madam. How would you like your dinner this morning? Oh, I would like it bloody raw. Fuck yes, you want. I will begin preparing it. Okay, anyway. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. I, I, I say, um, uh, Hey, Cedric. And I wave over to you. Uh, I walk over, then lean lean on the oh, cabinet. Fuck. I say, I say, could you get? Wait, did did? Okay, if we haven't gotten rid of that body, I'm gonna ask Cedric to get rid of it now. Where do you want? Like, so, where do you want me to put it? Move to another room at least. It shouldn't be here when we're all. Thought you did. Thought you did. Okay. I'll say yeah. you moved it to to a storeroom, but you didn't get rid of it per se. That's fine. I just don't want it to be in the room for him to stare at because that's a little, you know. Awkward. I mean, we might bring the corpse out if he, you know, if he, if he's being, you know, a hard ass. But yeah, you know, let's let's start let's start gentle. Anyway, mm. I uh, well, either way, I pull up a chair and, and, and sit next him. to him. <laughs> you just immediately tase him in the balls. How close are you to him? I'm probably uh, you know an arm's length away. I I look at him and say. So, let's make this easy between us. Do you work for anyone? He looks at you. You know, if you just did, if you just be honest with us, we don't have to hurt you or anything. Keeps his eye contact. Are you mute? Keeps his eye contact. What an absolute unit. I uh, I look at him and say, Okay, I figure we should inform you of the process before we get this. No, the girl no, over no. there the girl over there wants to feed you breakfast, butter you up, whatever, so you might talk to us. The and then if that good doesn't cop, work, bad cop treatment ever. Who tells them what we're gonna do? And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to start breaking fingers, cutting off limbs, doing whatever I need to to make you talk. Okay. But if you want to save us the effort, then you can talk now. Can I? Um, what kind of check is that? I'll be a coercion. Coercion. All right. You What's the difficulty? It, it's going to be three challenge dice. But keep in mind that it's not going to be a Hail Mary, even if it succeeds. Three challenge die? Whew, can I spend destiny on that? Yeah.
and I believe I might have a bonus on coercion checks real quick. Let me uh, double check. No, that's just to remove setback. Actually, I may, uh, I can suffer one strain to downgrade the difficulty of a coercion check. So, with the intimidating feat, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, it's gonna be two challenges and one difficulty. Hey! Make a um make make a hard vigilance check, Sless. Okay. Okay, let me just check what you have on you. Just to make something a little easier. Okay. So as you say this, um, you see him visibly sweating uh, and, 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 and worried and his eyes open a little bit. And then you see his eyes the first time break eye contact with you and dart across the room to his ex part his, his ex comrade's blaster pistol laying on the floor. Oh, fuck we didn't clean that up. <laughs> I his, say his eye contact goes back to you and then he darts for the pistol. Oh what a dick. All right, do I have the opportunity to tackle him mm -hmm. or something? Yep, make a competitive athletics check. So it's going to be two difficulty, uh, sorry, two challenge or one difficulty. Okay. I think you were too coercive. <laughs> oh. <Fuck. laughs> uh oh. That is a really mixed result. <laughs> Indeed, it is. Figuring out how to roleplay this should be fun. <laughs> Your pants come off, but his pants come off. But the <laughs> <laughs> so you you both run and you get a tackle on him as you slide towards the blaster pistol. Just in time, you knock it halfway across the room, way out of his reach, and begin to like choke him a little bit. And and you ask him like again, who does he work for? And the bandana Where's across Rachel? his mouth, the bandana across his mouth comes off, and he says. A fucking red hand, and he grabs your rifle and shoots himself in the face. Oh fuck! Oh god! He kill himself. Oh shit! Well, uh, easiest way to get out of torture without I'm, giving too much away. I'm guessing that the red hand. Well, he could have gotten out of torture by just telling us. I'm guessing the red hand would have tortured him even worse if they found out he told him. If he told us. Yep. Anyway, um, well, I know who the Red Hand is. Not unless you've learned it during the campaign. Kazari is super upset because she was like just over in the next room cooking dinner, and she like rushes over and she's like, "What did you say to him?" <laughs> I asked him who he worked for, and then explained how we were going to torture him if he didn't talk. Oh my god. <laughs> And he told me, fucking red hand, and then shot and killed himself. Jesus Christ. The, the red hand, did you say? Yes. Also, oh, God, there's so fuck. much blood. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Is there a lot of blood? Wouldn't the blaster sort of cauterize <laughs> a lot of the wound? Or, I don't know, who knows? Or maybe. Know. Yeah, it's probably not a ton of blood. There's a little bit of blood. Plus, could think there's a lot of blood. Depends on his uh, level. Actually, of blood. I, I imagine he's probably seen a lot more. He's no. probably more. Mm -hmm. um, it's too late. Sless is officially scared of blood in the cannon. <laughs> no, it Please was stop. He's already scared of so much. It was not. It, was not, it, it wasn't exactly the most precise shot because he wanted to just get it off. Yeah. And get it was a rifle that he had quickly grabbed. It wasn't like he grabbed a pistol. Like it was a hard aim, so probably shot an artery or something, and maybe maybe it's squirting a little bit. Maybe you, you, oh, you, yeah. Squirting. 
I, uh, I either way I say I'm going to go clean up while you guys figure out who this red hand group is or if you already know who it is then how to handle them okay by the way in the future I think you probably shouldn't elucidate our strategy before we do something to the thing we're doing it to why he told us who he works for and then he killed himself and that's a no we don't want him to kill himself we met our end goal. Oh my god, Sless. <laughs> Let's take two conflicts. <laughs> Sless is already at a zero morality. Oh, that's true, yeah. Sless mm. is in his own Jedi religion. The religion of Sless. <laughs> I, either way, yeah. Sless, Sless leaves to go clean up. Uh, <laughs> Himself uh, and his gun, probably. <laughs> Oh, uh, that... you're cleaning up yourself and you got- when you said it originally, I thought you were gonna clean up the body, you were just leaving it there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so this doesn't care about the body. I, I'm gonna pick up the body and just chuck it where the other one was. Okay. God, those are gonna start smelling. We really need to do something. Um... Yeah. I'm gonna serve food. So, um... Who would have checked on the security systems after the fight last night? I don't imagine it would be Sless, considering he was drunk. Mm. Um, I- Kasari might have, yeah. Okay, why don't you make a hard perception check for me? Okay. I looked back at the chat and I thought that that was your role, but it was actually Sless's role, and I was like, Oh god, it happened again! <laughs> Wow, that's actually a pretty decent roll. Yeah, it is. So, as you as you were checking on them last night, you think that you managed to get them all back online properly, but you did notice that none of the security cameras or, um, you know, what, uh, uh, any of the mech... <laughs> <laughs> any of the <laughs> any of the mechanisms that would track whether someone had entered the house and set off an alarm if they had done so, all of that stuff was offline when you got there and hadn't been on for like hours. Okay, so whoever runs this place, who gave us this place again? Uh, a friend of mine. I think your friend might have sold us out, or they have a hacker in their midst and they shut it down. With that, with that check, either can way, I, can either I... way, they they knew that we were here. Well, yeah. With that check, can I tell if 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 someone hacked into the system recently? I'd say that was beyond what you wrote. That check and what you're looking at, no. Oh well. Maybe with some advantage, you could have. Okay, let's review. Who's the red hand again? They are the group of Mandalorians. That's... Are they the ones holding Shao? With Shao. Yeah. Do I know that? I I would have told you. Did we know they were well, on this planet until now? I think Slas did. But I'm I, not sure. I don't I'm know. Really mad for Slas. Um, I I do think that um I was told that the Mandalorians that were with Sla uh with Shao were on this planet, but I was never told who they were. Yeah, the Red Hand are holding Xiao, and considering that, we probably don't want to be on here too much longer, just in case something happens again, so. Do I get nice and clean, buddy? Yeah, yeah it takes you like 20 minutes. And yeah. maybe a, you find a change of clothes out, upstairs, um, it's up to you whether you want to wear them, they're clearly Mandalorian fashion, but they're clothes. I don't think Sluss really cares. Uh, yeah. You put them on, you clean your armor pieces and change out the clothes part of your armor for Mandalorian stuff. Um, and, uh, come to this. Yep. I say, so, what is it that we, uh, figured out? Well, the people that, uh, that attacked us, I know where their main base is. Well, at least know which planet it's on. Good, let's go there and kill them. Uh, 
We have a few more stops off to do first, but... Wait, you do? It w- <laughs> you know where the Red Hand's main planet is, did you say? Well, where Cedric thinks it's main. Utapau. Because okay. okay. Malak told him. Alright, let's head straight to Utapau. No, we've got to go to uh, Naboo first. And then Solist. Okay. <laughs> and then Solist. And then Dagobah. And then Dagobah. And then, and then, 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 then Utapau. No, no, no. We need to figure out another detour. <laughs> and then we go off the map. Oh, let's go to Coruscant. We, we, got... <laughs> we got to go to uh, Tatooine at some point. Just kidding. Putty would never take us off the map. Nope. This is the only place <laughs> we can ever go. Why, buddy? Why do you restrict us to this hell? This is a hell? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> What a horrible quarter of the galaxy you're in. There is a lot of strife here. <laughs> um, to be fair, to be fair, around this period was just gla- in galactic strife everywhere. Was that what you were going to say, Pud? No, I was saying that in the opening crawl of the campaign, it was said that this region's really unstable. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's true. <laughs> this I, I, I just... Just figured it was it was pretty reasonable because the Republic was about ready to basically went bankrupt after the Mandalorian Wars, anyways. Okay, so um, Kasari says, "Well, I think we should either get off this planet quickly, or that I guess this isn't a planet really. It's like is this like an asteroid or just like a space station in space?" It's literally a just a space station. It's not on any rock or anything. It's just metal. Is it not even orbiting uh, a body? Is it like just in the middle of the blackness? Yeah. Jesus, that must be creepy. Okay. Um. No, I guess it's orbiting a star. Does that work? Is that science? Is that, does that make any that sense? Does, that does make sense. There you go. It's orbiting a star. Oh man, it was so much cooler before. Now it's just standard. Okay. Yep. Yep. No, this isn't a cool station. It's really standard. Oh, okay. In fact, if someone was if someone was looking for it, they might find it hard to do so. But who would be looking for a space station full of Mandalorians? Well, I'll tell you what would make it really fucking hard to find. If it, if it was cool literally in the middle of the black. <laughs> that would be really difficult to nail down. <laughs> anyway. Nah, nah, it'll be obvious. It'll be like, well, who's hiding out over there? Literally, rogue planets are the hardest thing to discover because they're just in the black. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, uh, I, I say, so either we leave this space station because if we stay here, we're going to get attacked more and more, or we try to stop the red hand on this space station, but that sounds like a lot of work. I forgot. Yeah. Am I done here? Uh, you could be. You also, you, you told me last week that you might want to talk to Drago. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot Drago's on the station. I say, um, before we leave, I do have one last person I want to talk to on this station. But after that, there's no jobs that I have here, at least. Sure. Uh, do you guys want to stay out here and, or maybe you know, change into Mandalorian clothes and look less like Jedi? That that might be actually a good idea. No thanks. I'll just stay here. Oh, I'll okay. stick with Do you have something against Mandalorian fashion? I just would, I just find it, I don't know, I, I'm proud of being a Jedi, I'm not going to cover it up. You know, are, no, okay. <laughs> Isn't pride like a huge negative of being a Jedi? Um, that's not the main thing. 
Okay. I say, Celeste, when did you learn so much about the Jedi Order? <laughs> By being around you guys. We never mentioned well, Prime most, once. Mostly just you. Say no words. Wait, what? What was that? What? What the fuck what? was that? It was what? <laughs> I just heard whispers. It's like burns, I said. Oh. 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 Um, Merkava and Zeptic. Because I said I mostly learned about being a Jedi from you. Fair enough. Okay. I'll change into Mandalorian armor. It's not armor, it's clothes. But sure. Oh, clothes. Thank God. Yeah, I'll switch into the clothes as well. Okay. You guys hide your uh, lightsabers under under a shirt yep. or something for a little uh -huh. bit too. And uh, yeah, so you gonna try? What well, I assume well, you all leave, and I assume Celeste you're trying to track down Drago. Yeah. All right. So after a, a little bit, probably you head back to the garages, and talk to some of the guys you know over there, and they tell you that. There's a, an exchange embassy on this side of town, where Drago would probably be hanging out. Ah, thank you. I uh, begin to head over to the exchange embassy then. Okay, it's um, kind of an open plan building with a couple floors. On one of the upper floors, there's kind of a corner bar where you find uh, Drago Vonchoff drinking uh, some sort of alcoholic beverage. He says, ah, Sless, glad you could make it. How was the meeting with the Mando? Oh, and you brought friends. How are you two doing? Um, doing all right. Fine enough. Here. Friends are real interesting, Sless. Anyway, what was, uh, what was it that you were interested in? Well, uh, first of all, that meeting with the uh, Mando, it was, it was solid, solid weed, though um, I feel as though it might have suddenly got me into more trouble than I expected. Um, either way, I was hoping to get more information on those um, jobs you told me about, like the one on Naboo, and um, I think the other one was on Solist. He nods his head and says, okay, let me just take a look. And he gets like a big binder out of a bag nearby. Well, actually, something just came up here, if you're interested. Oh. The Republic been looking for this place. They hear it because a lot of people on this station, in fact, pretty much everybody on here are ex-military. And there are some advanced tracking devices in place here, put up by the Red Hand. If you could shut them down, I'm sure it'd be worth a lot to the public. It's not an official job or anything, but they usually compensate people who help them. I uh, nod and say, is there any information on these um, tracking devices? He shakes his head and says, uh, it's real hear uh, hearsay. We've got just information on the grapevine that this place has been hard for Republicans like to find obviously we're a certain kind of clientele but you know, they don't open their doors to everybody i uh i nod and walk up the other two and say so how eager are you two to get off this station well i suppose if it would be helping the republic we could do it mm -hmm. i uh i nod and say all right, I'm um, I'm game for that. How much does it pay? Like I said, it's not an official job. They don't have a bounty or anything, but you mm. you, you could expect to be well, well compensated. Fair enough. Um, the other two, uh, I don't know a ton about them. You've got contacts on the planet, but they're both Republic jobs. Both CD stuff, though it's not official, um, and. I do know a little bit more about Sulist. Apparently the job on Sulist is related to the war. Oh. I say, all right. Um, yeah, just give me the information on the contacts if you have that, and I'll, uh, I'll look into it there. He shuffles to some papers and hands you two scribble down addresses. I nod and say, thanks, Drago, you've been a bud. Hey, 
I work on commission. He taps his nose. Goes back to his drink. All right. I uh, I say all right. You two ready to uh, fuck up some mandos? Sure. Why not? I don't know about fuck up, but isn't the job just to reset these trackers? Um, it's to disable them so the Republic can track them. Okay, well, where do we start? I don't know. I guess finding out where these trackers could potentially be. Well, I see there, there's two ways we could go about this. We could literally start, like, looking around for, like, satellite dishes and shit. Or we, um, or we start asking people in the bars... Yeah. So looking around probably will take a long time, but asking people in the bars sounds super risky. So I begin to have are... negative flashbacks to that one. The the first play that we were on Corzite and, and <laughs> asking around in the bars. Plus, if you were gonna put these track trackers anywhere, where would you put them? Uh, I guess mind. that's that's a good question. I guess if I was the one to place the trackers, Putty, where would I put them? I know, Sless, if you were the one to place those trackers, Sless, where would you put them? Please, keep it going for a while. <laughs> I don't know, Sless, if you were the one to place those trackers, where would you put them? Uh... Well, we have a I, 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 I look at them and I say, I'm not really too familiar with the tracking technology, so really, I can only give you a blind guess. Hmm. Shall we have a bit of a walk around then, see what we see? Alright. Wait. What the fuck are these things? Are these like for ships? You haven't, you haven't been that, that part of the station. Let's go to this part of the station. Okay. Okay, I so you walk, we... you walk down the south side of the station, past the garage, you notice your ship. It's looking a hell of a lot better than it did when they first docked. Um, and there's still people working on it though. And you head all the way through into a small kind of um, corridor area here. But before you do, you actually notice on the left here, this area is kind of cordoned off. There's a bit of a picket fence and some guards standing on it. And um, you head down in, into here. And I guess you take a few minutes exploring. You see that these are uh, there are shuttles all across these. And uh, up here is a kind of security room that they don't really let you into. That seems like it might have trackers in it. So that which bit is cordoned off? This part, right? This part. The street uh, is cordoned off, and you can you can see that there are kind of steel works down there. Men kind of working with men and women actually, burly and strong, working with some steel, maybe making weapons. Or They're something. all Mandalorians. They're always inclusive. Hmm. That's that's one thing that they are indeed. Well, they're a... after they genocide an entire planet, they're always willing to recruit the strongest of the bunch. They genocide equally. Yeah. <laughs> I suspect it's either gonna be in the middle of that cordon off area or in the security room. I'm going to guess the security room. Um I so how far do they let us go before they stop us when we get to the security room. Well, they stop you at the door to the, the, the circle, the, the spiral. So, okay. like, they stop you, like, there, and there's a guard in front of a big metal door. It says, off limits. Oh. Um. What exactly is in there? This is a security room. Uh. You know, got uh, surveillance cameras out on the streets and such. We also have, um, emergency phones in all of the accommodation that people can Call us up if anything's wrong, and here is just where we keep ourselves prepared if we need to answer a call. Oh, any tracking um, devices? Uh, sure. So, so, I mean, no, I'm not there. I'm not there. <laughs> there's no. Oh, 
I say, um, who has access to the security room? Is it just station personnel? Yeah, station personnel, any of, um, any of Shiva's trusted officers. Who is Shiva? Uh, she's the kind of the matriarch of this whole place. Keeps things running. Oh. All right. Um. Cool. I guess I I begin to kind of uh, I kind of want to uh, maybe like hide behind a the hallway and kind of just watch to see if they have any openings in their shift. The guards right there to uh, potentially kind of sneak in to the security area. Where exactly, you're trying to hide. Like right around the corner. Like in, down the shuttle way. Yeah. It probably like it probably takes you about ten minutes before you realize that the shuttles are actually quite busy, and there are people walking down and noticing you and like saying like, "Oh hi, uh, how how are you doing?" <laughs> oh, okay. Did you um, walk away when someone asked you that? They're like, oh, no, no, I can't. Trandoshans are so rude, and you walk into the main. I will situation. never like Trandoshans ever again. Racist forever. You're the bastards who genocided entire planets. <laughs> At least you didn't genocide all mine, though, so you're all good. Hashtag not all Mandos. Now, does hashtag not all Mandos in this case mean that not all Mandos participate in genocide or not all the people on this station are Mandos? That's up to you to, to interpret. Oh, man. Maybe both. I think both. Mm -hmm. Well, you just saw Drago, who is a human. Mandalorians can be humans. That's true. But he slash knows that Drago is not a Mandalorian. Oh. Um... I am going to... So I'm pretty sure it's in there, but we need to figure out the way to get in there without looking incredibly suspicious. Well... Is there a ventilation duct? Oh yeah. My speciality. I was thinking we could potentially disguise ourselves as, you know, maybe just standard engineers. Or you two, better yet. Uh, as a Trandoshan, I might look a little bit suspicious. That's you fair. Know, fix something up in the security area. Uh, Cedric's gonna have a look around if there's any uh, clear, like, engineer well, uniforms. I'm thinking that we could probably get one if we sneak into the blocked off area. There's a lot of workers, construction workers in there. I'm sure that one of them has, like, an engineer uniform of sorts, or in fact, they're probably all wearing engineer uniforms of sorts. If they're uh, constructing items on a uh, on a space mm -hmm. station. Yes, but I bet there's only so many people who have engineer uniforms that will get into that room. No, I'm I'm pointing out that. Oh. I like, say, no, no, you, you misunderstand. You don't need an engineer who has permission. You just need to have an engineer, you, or Kasari, who can bluff and say that they were hired to fix something in the security terminal, go in there, fuck shit up, and then leave. Or we can go guns blazing, take on an entire security station, What do you think, Kasari? Definitely not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we do, not that one. You know, honestly, I feel as though despite mine and your capabilities probably not being enough, Kasari, that your friend there is capable. That's not the one, one. Even if we were capable, that's not the reason we don't slaughter an entire space station. And what reason is that? Because that's wrong. I love and who says? You're, you're, like, 
You're like, oh, but, but pride. And then you're like, let's kill hundreds of people. <laughs> he was questioning your own morality. Oh my God, what <laughs> it might be worth mentioning that you were just told that most of the people on the station used to be part of the Mandalorian military during the war. <laughs> but not all of them. And they're not currently nope. doing That's anything. Fair. Well, how do you know? know I, I, oh, I didn't know that the Jedi were so quick to forgive people of past crimes. I don't know about the Jedi, but I am. Does Celeste know that she didn't fight in the war, or does she make that assumption given her age? I'm, I'm sure he does. He's not really aware because I think his sorry is only a few years younger than. Uh, the girl he raised. And, and to be fair, and she, he he pushed her into the Mandalorian Wars when she was like five or six. And to be fair, Kasai isn't that much younger than Cedric either. Like, Cedric, Cedric still... looks ancient, though. Yeah, Cedric is clearly battle scarred. <laughs> Say, uh, either way, I do feel as though that we should consider that option, at least for the, with these red hand folks that tried to kill you, mm. me and him, who are very clearly still up to something. No, I mean, like, no, we're not killing every person on this station. That's not, not happening. No, I'm talking about the red hand who control the station. We don't. One, we don't even know where they are. Well, we'll find out with when we start shooting who shoots back. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kasari, I believe you're the most sneaky one out of us. Try and find a That's way. That's actually not true. Yeah, I can't sneak for shit. <laughs> okay, I'm, like. I'm decent at, 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 at going through vents. But that's not really sneaking. It's just vent. That's just ventilation uh, navigation. It's my own skill I invented. You know what? I'm starting to think maybe we can just bluff ourselves in there. I'm gonna say that I'm looking for a job or something. Wish me luck. Oh my maybe God. they'll hire me and pay me better than the Republic <laughs> did. <laughs> uh, do you guys follow me? Should we? Because what if this goes wrong? Then we can't do the impersonating engineer's plan. Walking up maybe, to some maybe. random guy blocking this off and asking if I can work? There. Oh wait, you want to work for these guys? I thought you, you meant work for the security station. No. Oh yeah, okay, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Pretend like I'm just like looking for work oh, on the you. station. As yes, you walk up, uh, one of the guards begins to walk towards you. It's a, it's a woman, and she says to, to Sless, I think I know you. Fuck! Back out, back out. Abort. I, I say, do you? Well, not personally, but I think I've seen your face before. You a know. mighty Mando hunter. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> um, on and where days. might you have seen my face before? Yeah, just a few stories passed before, a few photographs taken. I'm sure. Oh, uh, well, this is... Artist interpretations. Did they get my good side? <laughs> You're a lot cuter in person. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I, it, 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 this is a woman that walked up to me? Yes. Uh... Does she look familiar to me? Not really. I say, and might I ask who the, you are? <laughs> I mean, I feel as though I'm at a weird disadvantage. Sure. My name is Cindy Gatal. Served in the war. Oh. As a um, Mandalorian? That's, yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, this is a little awkward, I feel. 
Very awkward. It's only awkward yeah, if you make it awkward. We are. Oh. <laughs> I say... Um... So... What is it that you came up to talk to me about? Just want to see if I am who you thought I was? A little bit, but also this area is off limits. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, what's going on back there? I mean, nothing special. Just the usual, just authorized personnel. I meant, like, it, there's a lot of construction there. You guys, like, building a new bar or something on this station? Oh, making guns. Oh. Two spaceships, but not out of here. Okay. Why are you making guns? It's worth it. It's good money. I guess that's fair enough. Okay. That's got to um, us up to date, right? And she points at her particularly fine-looking rifle in her hands. I uh, I nod and I say, "Well, my two friends here, um, we're kind of hoping to get a job, and they're looking for me to, you know, see if I could." find them something here on the station while I'm doing some things. Um, I don't know about your friends, but you certainly seem capable. Oh. Of construction work? Well, maybe. Looking at those arms, but there are other skills I'm aware of of yours. I do have plenty of skills. Mm. What kind of um, work are you looking for me? Uh, I... That's beyond my pay grade, but maybe you'd like to speak to, uh, to Shiva. Oh, I've heard of her. She's the, um, matriarch of the Citadel, or space station, I guess. Oh, is that what people are calling her now? <laughs> That's what Me? I was told. I just call her auntie. Oh, she's your aunt? She nuts. Oh, well. Um, I look at the woman and I say, um, do you know if anyone on this station sells, um, spare parts? Sure, what kind of spare parts? Um, little ones, uh, ones that you could use to repair, um, and then I stop for a second and I'm like, a blaster? Blaster pistol. Well, if you're looking for weapon parts, then we're probably the people to come to. Oh yeah. Okay. We don't. We don't tend to sell to outsiders, though. Sorry. Oh well. Is there anyone on the station who does sell any sorts of spare parts? I'm pretty sure good you good you can head down to the garages if you want some space station some spaceship parts. Okay, thank you. Um. Yeah. So. You could probably cool. find anything in at the stands on the um on the west side of the station. Uh stands. I don't even see those. those yesterday. You got food from one of them. Oh that's right! The stands! I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I sort of disappear into the shadows. Oh, where did oh, your friend go? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I say I think she's a lot stealthier than she told us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, in reality, I fell off the space station. I'm dead. <laughs> no. well, that was an abrupt ending. That was. That was abrupt. That was very... Whew. Anyway, no, I, um... It was an ignominious death. Uh, no, I will... I, 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 I'm gonna say, like, well, if, if like, are you, so are you gonna go work for these people, Slack? So what's happening? Uh... Do, do you ask that to me, like, openly? No, I, like, say it, you know, sort of privately. Oh, okay. I say, I mean, I think that's really the best shot I have. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. How about we meet you back up here in, like, I don't know, a couple hours? Um, sure, I guess. Okay. I, uh, I say, I, I, I walk back up to the woman and I say... Where did you say your aunt, um, Shiva, was? She's back here. If you want to follow me, I'll escort you. All right. Sure. Um, 
I uh, I kind of wave bye to my friends as I I guess I could escort it to her. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we'll do uh just so I know uh, we'll do Slash first. Watch well, just so I know where are you two going again. Well, I don't know about Cedric, but I still need to fix my lightsaber. So I am going to go to the stalls and look for parts uh, to build a lightsaber handle, which usually I think would cost 300 credits. I want to say. Um, but you okay. might handle it differently. I don't, you know, I don't know how you yeah, sure. deal with that, but. Okie dokie. All right. So we will do Slice first. Uh, Slice. I'll go around with Kasari. Okay. So Slice, you are taken, uh, through the, the, the kind of area with a bunch of people just hammering away, crafting weapons. It's kind of a interesting sight for you to see so many guns being made really efficiently too really quickly these are strong individuals who are just are moving stuff with with such pace they're almost like human conveyor lines the way they they put this stuff together before you are eventually led to uh, a kind of indoor enclosure well obviously everything's indoor but an even you know it, this is a bit more of an open space and there's a, a smaller kind of building here that you get taken into and and she says uh, as you, you reach a set of stairs Third floor, uh, can't miss her. I, uh, I nod and I head up the staircase, I guess. Okay, so you head up to the third floor where you see a very open kind of room with a bunch of comfortable looking chairs, um, a bunch of no, no, consoles, <laughs> a bunch of consoles. I sweat <laughs> nervously. <laughs> a bunch of consoles cover the walls of the room and you see two figures talking. They haven't noticed you yet. I uh, Celeste like makes a bunch of weird like small talk to avoid his overwhelming fear of chairs. He's like, oh, so ah, it's pretty hot in here, right? I uh, I I kind of um, I kind of I guess knock on the wall a little bit and say, I, I hope I'm not intruding on anything. I was told that I have a potential job here. This is quite a large room, so when you do that, you. Uh, they they don't actually react to you. They still seem deep in in conversation. I <laughs> I uh, I kind of cough a little bit. <laughs> they still seem deep in conversation. I uh, I guess I uh, oh, can I roll a listen check to see? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's gonna be average or, or perception per check. Average perception, yeah. I'm gonna flip Destiny though, so I'm uh, trying okay. to find difficulty. Cool. Ooh. Okay, so yeah, you're able to expertly. You take two strain doing this because of all the chairs and the fact you have to kind of get close to a chair to do this, but. Um, you can listen across the room to the two figures. You can actually tell um, one of them is a lot bigger than the other one. You can tell one of them is a Cathar male, and the other one is a human Mandalorian female. Um, ooh, a Cathar next to a Mandalorian. Things are... Ooh. Cathar says, Hmm, my awakening at Abad Neto was premature, but I have my orders. And the, the female replies, Yes, go to my father, uh, to my uncle, uh, to it. Go to my brother now. Go to my brother now. It'll be easier from there. We have everything taken care of here. Hmm. Indeed. Watch yourself. It seems they are hunting us. Yes, I know. The Cathar begins to leave the room and he notices you but doesn't really react. I guess I walk up to the Mandalorian. Ah. Nobody gets this far without being here for a reason. Um, Can I help you? Yes, your, I guess your niece told me that. Um, Which niece? You had a. We have got hundreds. <laughs> what was her name? Is like uh, Cindy. Cindy. I say, um, Cindy, oh. one of your security. She said that you had a potential job opportunity for me. She did. She strokes her chin a little bit. Can't think of anything in particular. Well, actually, hmm. Who are you? I'm Slus Voss. Oh God! Did it occur to you, Slus, 
that they're just leading the Mando Hunter into the fucking Viper's Nest to just stab you to death? Like... <laughs> I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she offers her hands kind of limply and says, Shiva. Shiva Gatal. Uh, I shake it. I, uh, kind of awkwardly, I imagine, because because of, uh, you know, just the weird Trandoshan hands. I've heard of you. My nephew, one of my nephews, served in the war. And many of my nieces. But, yes, I think I know what you could do for me. The exchange, you're becoming a nuisance on this planet. They're led here by a man called Drago Von Choff. You could take care of him for me, I would pay you handsomely. Drago. Hmm. How much are we talking in terms of payment? Hmm. I have a lot of resources. I can offer you 6,000 credits and maybe a choice at my weapons store. A ship, perhaps. Shit. All of that or just one? I, uh, I say, um, the credits and a choice of a weapon or ship? Hmm. No, I think that's a little too much for a simple trip across town. How about one of the three? I, uh, say, that is a tempting offer. I, um, I say... You're going to have to tell me a little bit about the kind of weapons or ship set you have available. Mostly shuttles on the uh, on the shuttle section. Most of those are ours. They're simple, but they they do the job. Weapons, uh, we're experimenting. There are a lot of plans we had over the last couple of decades, and. Well, recently we've gotten access to a lot more Republic plans, and we're trying to integrate them. So some of the weapons we have aren't pristine, but the prototypes are interesting. Interesting. I'm actually surprised you Mandalorians have put away your pride long enough to use Republic designs. Don't take that as an insult. Mandalorian weapons are often fairly fine. She, she, uh, she nods her head and says, uh, not all of our kind are like-minded. The fact that we're even here shows that we're a little different. The Red Hand aren't so tied to history. We hope to make a better Mandalore. I, uh, I nod and say, I'll, um, I'll consider your offer. Is there anyone that I can talk to, or should I talk to you personally if I decide to take on the job? Hmm. Since you've already talked to Cindy, you would be fine relaying anything you know to her. I, um, I nod and say, all right, I'll, um, I'll keep in contact with her then. It was nice meeting you. And you, after I feared so much. I, apparently a lot of people have heard so much of me. Well, they have in our line of work. I, uh, I nod and begin to leave. Okay, meanwhile, I am going to have Yukasari make a average negotiation check, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. To see how you pull these parts together. If you're not AFK. I'm not. Cool. One second. I was sitting back That's fine. looking at it. Okay. So you said average? Yeah. Boom shakalaka. Cool. Let's take a look. Uh, all right. So you spend some time wandering about random spare parts shops, finding like weird focusing crystals that were part of like a spyglass or something at some point and uh, stuff like that. Of course, just the metal components are pretty easy to find. And you end up putting this all together for um, uh, around 400 credits. You managed to put this all together. A reasonable offer. 
and I, I pay the good sirs all the money that they require. all the money. <laughs> bits here, bits there, and you think you could probably construct a lightsaber hilt with what you've got? Okay, I take uh, it all together and I begin constructing the hilt. Uh, what kind of check will that be? I think there's actually Where? little to say in the book. Where exactly are you constructing this? Oh, in the in the house, in the private house. Okay, cool. Yeah, not, not like uh, on the street. I'm not gonna check the book right now, but I'm, I I'm, I think this is the right check. I think it's average mechanics. That seems reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, bud. Nice. Uh, why don't you roll a d8 for me real quick? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, wait. How do you roll dice on this? Excavation mark d8. Four. One second. Uh, ooh, that's the wrong one, but I roll. Uh, so... Ooh, you make uh, you make intricate patterns on this hilt, having you know just experienced quite a, a force shock on Malastare. You've got a lot of thoughts about the force. You've just gone through a lot of visions, and you know your your construction of this lightsaber is guided by the force. And, and you're definitely uh, the patterns that you weave are very spiritual and very um, uh, and very intricate. And that should have popped up for you, oh, shit. if not just head to hills. Hilt, 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 hilt. Which one is it? Uh, it should be the only one that you can see. I can artifact. See so many. That's artifact. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Electrum, Firebrand, Oscillator, Priest, and Sentinel. You can't see artifact. I can see artifact. I was just saying there. the other ones I can see. Beautiful. Okay, good. Very pretty. So pretty. Uh, very proud of my new hilt. I placed the accolade of haste inside and test it out. It ignites perfectly, and you have a new lightsaber. Woo! It's uh, the stats of a standard hilt with the accolade of haste uh, thing in it. Actually, one second. You got two. You got one. Yeah, one advantage on the thing. So, yeah, I'd say it's it's a standard hilt. Just a uh, just normal normie. It's a normie hilt. Although I would say it's um, because you constructed it yourself and you're very intricately familiar with it and it's quite easy to work with, you will have boost on adding modifications to it that aren't on the crystal. You know what I mean? If you were to add. Modifications to the hilt itself. Or, yeah, or attachments you might want to put on it eventually because you have hard points still left. Uh, that's fair enough. Um... I'm actually going to look. On my like, so on my way back to the meeting point with Sless, I'm gonna l go through the market a second time. This time, I'm gonna keep an eye out for any what look like hilt attachments. I, uh, on a Jedi. I, I know there's probably not gonna be, but maybe someone has it and they don't know what it is. That's really fair. Why don't you make a um? Why don't you make a formidable negotiation check? I know it seems weird to be negotiation, but you know you're you're think, navigating a market. I think that is the standard yeah. rule for it. I don't think that's that weird. I'm like, hey, show me a back stock, and he's like, nah, it's nothing but crap back there. And I'm like, that's what I'm looking for. Show me all the weird shit. Show me your crap. And he's like, okay, I got this weird thing that attaches onto a stick-looking thing and makes things <laughs> go on fire. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You uh, nope. you find a few things that you're like, is this a lightsaber attachment? You think about it for a second, and you're like, oh no, that goes on blaster pistol. Is this is this a light? No, that's a rat on a stick. Is this a light? <laughs> is this a light? No, no, that is an old school shield. I haven't seen one of these in a while. Let me put it back. Oh man. I find some like, you find some jammers, you know, some communication jammers and stuff like I that. Found a you know. shield, you say? Yeah, like a fucking metal shield. That sounds kind of cool. Does it look cool? It looks a little cool, yeah. It's got, like, a symbol on it. What's the symbol? Um, 
Oh, you make an outer rim all check. It's gonna be average. I really want this to be like a Sith symbol, but Kasari doesn't know, <laughs> and she's like, it's beautiful, let me wear it. <laughs> uh, it looks like, it, it isn't exactly this, but it looks very similar to the, the Mandalorian military symbol. But it does look modified and different. Interesting. Do I think the shield would be any use in combat? No. Okay, I put it down. It looks actually with that check, I'll say it looks ornamental. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, so I, I guess the two of us go back to where we were gonna meet with Celeste. Okay, you all meet up uh, towards the exit of the Red Hand area. I look uh, at them and say, "I'm not doing their job." Oh. Oh. They want me to kill Drago, the friend of mine that I met in the embassy. Drago is nothing but a friend, though. <laughs> you know, you know what the Strandoshan say? Don't make friends with Wookiees, because if you do, then you don't want to hunt them. It's the same thing with him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Uh, so, where's the engineer's uniforms? I didn't pick any up. They escorted me. Well, this You're cool. Okay. Did not work. Mm -mm. Do you My mention anything too about well known. the um, conversation? Do you mention anything to these two about the conversation you overheard? Oh, the Cathar. <laughs> um. I, 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 I think I, I, I say, speaking of which, I, I, I'm actually struggling to kind of remember the contents of the conversation I heard. Um, the Cathar, fuck, I, I think they were in trouble or something. <laughs> I'm having the weirdest mental block, so I'll say that Sluss dismissed it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, do you want me to tell you, like, the two, like, key things that, that were in the conversation? Uh, yes, please. So, yeah, the Cathar said that his, uh, awakening on Abedneto came prematurely, but he still had something to do. And she said for him to go and find his, her brother. Oh, yeah. I said... Are you too aware of any types of awakenings on Abendetto? The awakening. Specifically for a Cathar man? Abednedo. That was that really desert, deserty planet, wasn't it? Yes, with all the sand that we all hated. See, we. Because it was so you know coarse. What? When we left Abednedo, there was some weird stuff going on there. You know, we, I, mm -hmm. we, I always felt like we kind of left it prematurely. Um, there was the Sith tomb. That might be awakening, because we didn't really do anything with it. Um, and remember what's in my head. What? With, remember what's in my head, which was in McCarver's head. Oh, God, I forgot about that. Oh, shit. Wait. You, don't worry, he said it came premature and that didn't sound good. You know, I don't like being referred to as that thing in your head. Oh well, that's what you're being called now. Can you ask him in, the thing in your head if he, um, if he knows anything about Awakening? Doesn't, doesn't... On Avenetto? Doesn't he have a name? Why are we calling it the thing? Thing. Mostly, <laughs> I imagine it's so that we don't, um... You know, alert the people walking around us that there's a Sith Emperor in Cedric's head. Oh, That's because that Trandoshan did such a good idea, a good job of keeping me safe yes. and secret earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah, how, well, how about we call him Mr. E? Why? Yeah, I, I take it back, I don't like her anymore. <laughs> I say, either way, ask him if he knows anything about it. He might be useful. So, back into my head. 
So, do you know it? <laughs> so you were the one who produced Force Lightning on Abernetto, didn't you? No. What? Look, you're in my head. I can tell if you're lying. No, you can't. <laughs> yes, I can. I'm in your head. I can tell when you don't when you're lying. <laughs> that is a fair point. Damn. No. But that 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 Look, does we can make get paradox. Into semantics, but it was Macava's body. It was Macava producing the lightning. He was always capable of it. He just needed to know how. Okay, that tells me quite a lot. So what else did you do when you were up there and told me to walk away? So now you want my help? No, I want your information. That kind of is like one. That thing. is. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear, you just hear Kasari the slut say, yeah, you are asking for help. <laughs> That's a little uh, bit like asking for help. Uh, fine. What was it? <laughs> what did you do? Yes, I'm asking for your help. Whatever. I'm gonna have to take one conflict for working with him in a in a reasonably coherent way. Um, he says, "Fine, I'll tell you. There's no harm in it. I'd been looking for that place for a long time. There are powerful allies there. Now they are allies once more." <sighs> and I can only assume what they're going to do now. Great. I don't know what they're going to do now. That I have no part in. You have to ask Zinzalin. Great. That's another reason why we need to go to Dagobah now. Mm. Yes, I agree. You should go to Dagobah. So, did he, um, was he useful for anything other than bending you over and fucking over your morals? Not really. He, well, I have a feeling the person that's working with the Red Hand, the Cathar, is potentially a very old Sith. Hmm. Well, or she's least... looking. He's looking for um, the leader of this, the Red Hand's brother, apparently. Brother. Mm hmm. Brother in that case might have been a euphemism for something. Could have been, or it could be a bit more literal. You know, because apparently. I'm wait, 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 wait. Because uh, the Emperor did say that he left them to Zinzalin. That Cathar wasn't one of them. The, the Cathar, I believe, is an old Sith that the Emperor. May You're have awakened. That, that Cathar right now that was just in there is an old Sith. I think so. I feel like we would have felt something. Well, we never saw him. I feel he's on the space I know. station. Either way, I don't know anything about your Jedi voodoo. Well, but. I did like, seek that out, by the way, since you said you feel like you may have felt something. Sorry, what'd you say? Oh wait, because Cedric's uh, that seemed to be in the little point. Sorry, Slash. Oh, I was I was gonna say either way, it's possible considering that the this woman apparently is has like fifty billion people she's related to who fought in the Mandalorian Wars, that her brother might be well, either a very skilled Mandalorian or Man the Mandalore himself. Or what the ma past Mandalore. 
Hmm. Since nice you said that, do either of you two Jedi... Since you said you feel like you would have felt something, do either of you try? Sure. Yeah. I'll try as well. What are you using? Uh... I don't really have anything, truly, to look. Slash no, begins to go into a deep meditative state, hulking through the Force. <laughs> what? You feel a ripple in the Force. You feel <laughs> the sounds around you as, as if they were alive. But And then you realize you were just hungry. Yeah. <laughs> you just need a Snickers. Um, Not you when you're hungry. Yeah, so I... I will I will use the seek force power. Okay, roll it. Actually, I'm gonna have you make an average discipline check too, because there's clearly something interfering with the uh, with your attempts to do so. What? That you emperor? <laughs> God damn it! To take a guess, if this guy is really an ancient Sith, that he probably has the capabilities of hiding his evilness. Or masking it. Did you say average discipline? Mm-hmm. With the uh, you combine it with the first power, yeah. Ooh. Oh shit. Oh shit. So as you uh search oh, how many of those points are you spending? All, All five. of the white ones. Nice. So as you uh search through the force, you feel the the living beings around you, you feel all of the life of the station at once, and you try to hone in on any source of darkness. There's a lot of negative emotions, a lot of passion, a lot of angriness on the station, um, <clears throat> a lot of resentment and bitterness, a lot of hatred. But the only person that you can feel actually shaping and using the dark side of the force, you do find that you narrow in, you narrow down, although in doing so, you do. Um, you know, in, in coming into contact with such darkness, especially all over the spaceship, you do gain one conflict, but you um, you are able to narrow in exactly and get vision on um, a Cathar male in a, in, in a long black cloak boarding a shuttle here on the spaceship. Cedric was right. You should also find the identification number of the spaceship, and uh, yeah, that's probably about it. You can see the Cather's face, you get a good glimpse of it. He looks old, he looks worn. He's wearing some sort of metal kind of, not almost like a half mask that only covers his the top of his head and the two sides of his head. It does sound a little sithy. It's gold, and, and he's got a nose ring. Okay guys, do we want to go with the, the ancient plan of Kasari running on and jumping on a spaceship without their permission? <laughs> That that seems it's worked out before. Nice. Might as well have it work out again. Do we actually want to try it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. I'm not putting what myself gonna, in. What am I gonna do once I'm on board? Fight him. He's a Sith. Him. Fight him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my well, God. I'm gonna be running after you, so it might be two of us on there. Okay, I start running. I start sprinting after. <laughs> it's less sprinting. I look real confused, and probably after a few minutes, I kind of just casually walk. Okay, then the two people who are sprinting make a hard athletics check. And I tell you what, you're going to upgrade both of them with Destiny. Oh, man. It's going to be one challenge and two difficulty. I get two more XP towards athletics on the shoulder pads. What is it? A uh, hard check. Oh. Yeah, one shot. Too difficult. Eh? Also. Mm -hmm. Oh, those would have been handy. Yes, he succeeds with one threat. So you both succeed. Um, and, and quickly slide in as, as you you notice the Cathar opening the ship and you get close enough to like you're like pretty much within you're in short range of him and he looks at you and uh, he, he waits and he waits for for what you, you're going to say oh <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this I say who are you 
I have many names. Fuck, it's definitely a sim. <laughs> okay. Let, let's go with your most recognizable name then. How about that? If I was recognizable, I wouldn't do my job properly. Look, I have one question. Well, What's your I... favorite name? Let's besides go with the... that one. <laughs> besides the one I already asked, I'd say. Are you a Sith Lord? <laughs> <laughs> he stares at you for a little while and says, I trained under Exarchum. What the fuck? I don't yeah, know, I maybe, he's maybe he, he's is. a good guy. No, maybe. <laughs> Probably not. Exar Kun turned into a Sith Lord. That was a joke. Oh. <laughs> I follow Exar his Exar teachings. Exar Kun's like the number one bad, evil Sith Lord. He, w he was at one point a, a Jedi, so. Yeah, he says, he, I, I think he was the first Sith Lord. Well, no. 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 No, no, who was the first? There were tons of first, but he was he was more recent. Anyway, what, what, what did he say? He says, I serve under... I, I, I followed his teachings. Whether you think that makes me a Sith Lord is quite frankly up to you. As, as I say, Puddy, would Cedric know who Exar Kun was? I think so. I don't think it's a secret. He's pretty famous. He was responsible for the Great Sith yeah. War before the Mandalorian Wars. The one your master fought in. Because so, Ari probably knows who Exar Kun is. Yeah. No, it's, de it's definitely at this point just a part of probably, I would assume, Jedi teaching. History mm. book stuff, you know? like. May I ask you a question? Yes. Of course. What is the year? <sighs> I what tell is him he? the year because I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> he nods and says, useful. Are you Doctor Who? So what? <laughs> How do you not know the year? Yeah, his eyes train on you, Cedric, for a little while. And you sense a connection between you two. I look at him and say, Where are you going now? He's ignoring- he, he looks stare. he's staring at you, but almost like through you. Oh god, he sees the- And he look- he looks intently listening to something, but it isn't you. I, I go into my hair and say, Yoo-hoo, Emperor! Don't... There is no response. Fuck, they're talking. They're totally talking. Kill them! Kill them both somehow! Kill the, both. kill the Sith Lord and then cut off Cedric's head. Oh he grinds. <laughs> so the cop. would be crazy if I did that right now! <laughs> <laughs> the Kathar in front of you grinds his teeth a little and, and says, It does me no pleasure serving you. I suppose I have a debt. Fine. I'll answer your question. I'm going to Utapau. And he starts to board his ship. What are you doing on Utapau? That I will not answer. Are you meeting with... Actually... I was about to say something, but then Kasari's like, oh, if he doesn't know about that, I don't want to give that information away, so I say. Sorry, what was that? He says. Nothing! Nothing! What? Oh. Okay, he says, closing the spaceship doors, letting a Sith Lord walk away. Should we fight him? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh... he's... the door is closed, the ship is a leaving. Oh, man. Cut it open with your lightsabers! Could we do that? We could try. You wanna try, Cedric? Hell, I think Cedric could probably just rip off the door with his bare hands. Come on, Cedric, <laughs> do it. No. Cedric's gonna let him go. Why? Because he uh, he knows he's not going to get the information from. That's not why we would fight him. Like, yeah, yeah. no, but you the... would fight him because he's a, literally a Sith Lord. Well, maybe not a that, Sith Lord. That but is the apprentice of one. 
I, that's fair. I'm going to say that he well, got um, away and Cedric takes yeah. one conflict because he's basically letting him go because the Emperor said so. Wait, he's letting go because the Emperor said so? No, just... I don't know what said so, but... It's in, it's, it's, it's it's, in his head. Yeah, I'm more concentrating on what the fuck the Emperor's doing. Oh God, is the Emperor than... saying a bunch of shit to you right now in private chat? God damn it, buddy. <laughs> I'm actually not. Oh. No. <laughs> the ship gets away, Celeste catches up. Not not at all out of breath because he was very uh, relaxed. I you say, two are a lot Why are we running breath. over here? Did you see any chairs on the way here? Nope. Okay. Hey. <laughs> nope. Uh, I say, well, we. I sense something. I, I feel like I'm suffering through the psychological effect where I no longer see chairs. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that is gonna be My a problem. <laughs> what are uh. eventually you'll be like, what are chairs? Um I say well we're gonna find out what are chairs after this quick five minute break. Oh. A yeah. five minute break, huh? A five minute break, yeah. Five minute so break, wow. I'll be back for like 37, so I'm gonna go pee. I'm back. Anybody else? Literally no. The Hawkmeister has returned. <laughs> Hello. Hello. First encounters with the Sith kind. Indeed. I think Kasari learned something there. Oh, what did she learn? I can't tell you. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll okay. tell you later. Okay. <laughs> I'm back now. I'm not back. What? He's not back, guys. We need to search Fuck. for him. I'm only here in spirit. Celeste is connecting to you through the force. All right, well, since everyone's back, let's just keep going. What are you guys going right. to uh, I, I believe... <laughs> I believe we left off with me asking, so why did we... Did you guys to run over here? Uh, that was a Sith Lord. God. Um. And. Did you guys fail to catch up to him? No. We found him. Oh. But. Something strange happened. Did he use his weird. Uh, not Jedi. I'm getting better, Kasari. Sith voodoo. Hey! Very different. It is different. On you. No, but... I think the Emperor... I... I... As I say this, I'm gonna go back into my head and say... Hello? 
Emperor, are you still there? I'm always Hello. here. Yeah, what did you say to that guy again? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, usually when you're ignoring someone inside their own head, it means you're talking to someone else. I've, I've gathered that by now. Hmm. Curious. Curious indeed. <laughs> and considering his reaction, you told him to do something. I learned a lot about what my followers have been doing while I have been incapacitated. Hmm. Well, he's hardly one of your followers. He follows XR Coon. I didn't realize. Yeah. <laughs> didn't realize he was one of your followers. He's not. Or at least he didn't used to be. But he has been in touch with many of them. And it seems he follows a duty, a code, and owes me a debt. A debt he will pay. I'm trying to you think of what? why I thought XR Kuden was the first Sith Lord. Did you get that, buddy? What did you say, sir? Uh, how? How will he? I don't trust you anymore, so what? I'm not going to be answering that question. The fact that there was a time where he trusted you is terrifying. I think it was the time he was in control of him. Probably. <sighs> well, we'll find a way to get you out of my head one way or another. There are many easy ways. Execution is one of the easy ways. Yep. <laughs> Let's go. I'm starting to like this place less and less. I don't have a problem with this place personally. I mean, it's, you know, it is what it is. It can't help who it is. Also, we're supposed to be disabling a... Uh... God, I totally forgot about that shit. You know what? Have you ever considered... No, that's not going to work. Never mind. I was going to say, have you ever considered now that you know... Now that you have contacts within the Red Hand, you could convince them to shut them off, but I don't think you can. Um, I've literally talked to just one woman, and we have a job opportunity, and they refer to me as the Mandalorian Slayer. <laughs> yeah. That is some... That's some real street cred you got there. <laughs> Um, I know. I feel like I'm almost undeserving of it. How many Mandalorians did you kill? Um, in terms of raw numbers, not that many. Most were just high officials. Like generals. Gotcha. The story of the Jedi won't tell you is it wasn't Revan who killed none or killed him. What <laughs> <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> it was in the middle of the duel between Revan and Manuel the Ultimate and There was a sniper on the side. <laughs> oh my god, there was a second shooter on the on the <laughs> On the grassy knoll. On the grassy knoll. And it was last Holy fuck. And then Revan was like, that was totally me! <laughs> And Revan, like, puts his lightsaber through the hole where he got shot so that it, like, checked out. <laughs> anyway. Um... Connor raises it. Yeah, it fucks up the evidence. Yep, yep. Then chops up the body into chum for good me good measure and, then, like, <laughs> feeds it to fishes. And he's like, no one will ever know the truth. Um... What are these buildings here? These square ones? Uh, they're little outposts for, uh, like, tools and parts. You've been able to see as you've been walking past them. A lot of the mechanics that are working on the ships uh, are taking parts and tools and stuff from these little sheds. Do we see any ventilation shafts? I you... imagine. Hmm? Go on. Oh, uh, no, no, you, 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 you can finish you, your description. You, you, you... <laughs> 
you uh, you have seen some ventilation shafts quite high up on the walls, especially out here. Um, very difficult to reach, especially discreetly. Shit, but none over here. You ha you haven't seen any ventilation shafts in this corridor, um, or no, there haven't been any down the shuttle pod lanes either. There is a glass window nearby, though, like, here. I look through it. <laughs> you see the, the, ex the excessive space in the distance. You see the Cathar ship floating right out of your view. Son of a bitch! I'll uh, be right back. Okay. I am going to, um... I'm gonna say that... Like, I, where would, I feel like they're definitely in that security building if they do have anti-trackers or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I guess they could be in the Red Hand quarters, but I'm thinking they're in here. So, we have to get in there. I think a distraction's the best way to go. Whoever is the sneakiest of us, probably Celeste, will go in while the others distract the guards. Yeah. I think we go with the classic staged fight routine. Hmm. That could be a way to do it. But then, like... It would leave me and you punching up. Just a bad look for Cedric beating up which, a little girl. Which does look a bit odd. Wow. Whereas if me and Celeste were punching each other, it looks a little bit more realistic. No offense, because sorry. Art is actually the most skilled hand to hand combat artist in the party, like in terms of like skills rather than Skill. physical attributes. Who is? Sorry. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I'll say that, uh, look, I, I understand. It's not a good look. How about instead we swerve, you're beating up a little girl, and they arrest you? <laughs> That's but a much better if look. I, if oh, I get arrested, look, if I get arrested, then you've got to break me out of jail. And if they find out who I am, they're most likely just gonna shoot me in the head okay we'll do it weird then you pretend to be a cripple i'll be beating you up they're not gonna arrest a little girl for beating up a cripple we could take all my prosthetics out and oh, then that man, would look, that would look <laughs> wait I got, it. I got it i got it you slip on a banana peel and you're, and we pretend to have your arm come off <laughs> and we're like please security help this man's arm just came off <laughs> it is a foolproof plan. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. It's foolproof. No, but if we're gonna do that, we need to, like, ramp it up, like, all three of my... Like, both my arms need to go off, and my leg needs to go no, off. No, that's like... overkill. <laughs> They'll know something Okay, up. both my arms. No, just one body part. <laughs> where's... Where's Celeste? Or where's Toe? Did he leave? Did he get to Yeah. Here. Oh, man. I guess the break wasn't good enough for him. Nope. Clearly not. I say we kill him and his whole family. You yep. With me? I'm already yeah, on it. Pretty good. You calling in the airstrike? Tactical nuke inbound. Tactical nuke? That might be a little extreme. Yeah, you're right. Dirty bomb. Dirty bomb? <laughs> Gonna kill him, kill him slowly. <laughs> it's funny that they have something called a dirty bomb and it's not a sex position. <laughs> Yet. 
We can talk after, but I, I, I have some ideas of what a dirty bomb might be, sexually. <laughs> and they're all disgusting. Yeah, maybe best not in a recording. That's why I said after. Yeah. I mean, they are really yeah. raunchy. Just the most... I, I'm sure some of them are illegal. Anyway, um... Well, I say that we pretend that Sless agrees with this plan. And... Uh, we begin the plan. <laughs> okay, what are you doing? Uh, so the plan is, we are going to begin walking together up the, just, 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 I think we're going to be walking from here, like, we're going to look like we're coming off the shuttle lane. And okay. then, as we reach this point where we're in clear view of the guards, we're going to be, whoops, slip on a banana peel, and his arm comes off. Not an actual banana peel. He's just going to slip on, I don't know, like grease or something. Okay. So yep. the arm comes off. Then I yell, guards, guards. Oh, no. His arm came off. Please. We need your help. The guard comes over. Slus slips through like a glove on butter. Okay. Do you execute this bump? We execute the plan. <laughs> you walk down the thing, Cedric slips and falls, uh, Cedric make a, um, I think it's coordination, right? That's the skill in the skin? Yep. Yeah. Make an average coordination to see how seamlessly your arm comes off. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty seamlessly, your arm slips off and falls across the, uh, slides across the, um, across the corridor taking very little damage and you look in anticipation Kasari at the one guard guarding the door up here and he looks at Cedric for a little bit and then goes <laughs> uh, and then goes back to just guarding the door I say please help <laughs> is he not, is all right he I'm back to the, to the please for help he's still giggling a little bit I'm just a little girl, I don't know how to help him. I I I stopped the sorry. arm back on. Ah, oh, fine, I do it. <laughs> what are you guys doing? We tried a plan, it didn't work. We'll have to wait for the next guy on the shift. I'm thinking we fight. Oh, so now you want to kill everyone on the station? No, no. Has a red hand logo no, on there. Just Cedric. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> no, I mean we pretend we we have to stage a fight. It's the only way I can think of doing a distraction. Slash, how good are you at sneaking? Um, I have two rakes in it, and I good. have four skill. Hmm. Yeah, he's pretty sneaky. Okay, Cedric. Instead of causing a f staged fight with me, since we agreed that that's not a good look, what if you caused a real fight down here on the docks with random people? That would cause a decent commotion for the guard to at least be distracted, even if he doesn't come over, hopefully giving Celeste an opportunity to insert himself in the security outpost. Good idea. Do you like that idea, Celeste, since you're also on the line for this one? Um... So, if we are to go about that plan, there's one issue. What if the door is locked? And two, what if it's extremely difficult to unlock? Then, abort. Oh, alright. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would suggest... Do you have any lockpicking skills? I, I have... Lock picking skills, as in I have skullduggery, okay. but if it's a computer lock system, then I would require computer check, and I'll get fucked. In that case, I would recommend shooting the door. Uh huh. That might make a lot of noise, though. Hmm. Oh, you were serious about that. <laughs> yeah, don't shoot the door. Um. Just, uh... I would say, I mean, like, yeah, if it's locked, abort, you know? 
If it's locked, we have to deal with it anyway, right? Okay. And Cedric won't get arrested? Cedric might or, get arrested. Or kicked off the space station? That also might happen. Well, what's your plan? I don't have a plan. This is our only plan, but I want to make sure that this it's is our foolproof. Second plan. Yeah, this is our second plan. We, went, we, we, we activated the first plan and it didn't go so well. And it's definitely not Plus, foolproof. No, remember. I said I want to make sure it's foolproof. Or try to make it as foolproof as possible. Plus, no plan survives contact with the enemy. Yeah, let's not even try to make it a good plan. No, anyway, I, I, say, <laughs> I say, well... How can we make it so that Celeste doesn't get arrested? You mean Cedric? Cedric, I mean, yeah. Uh, I don't have a clue. I think our, it, I, I think it's pretty likely if we enact this plan that Cedric will get arrested. What if you tell the guards that they called your mother a bad word? <laughs> I look to Cedric. <laughs> Have we ever considered that this is such a lawless station that no one will care and there are no guards and no one will come over and it's a terrible distraction? It's just hmm. I don't, that I don't think that this station's particularly lawless. It's just that it's directly under control of the Red Hand. Which, by the way, is looking more and more like a, uh, a terrorist organization looking to bring down the Republic and restore the Mandalorian Empire I'm pretty sure it's always second. been that. I don't know if I've ever viewed it yeah. as like a, a good guy team. The oh, Red Hand? Do you think don't you mean the, the, the NBA champions 2018? You know, the big, the big Red Hands? <laughs> what the fuck? They're the good guys. There's a sports team. What is this terrorist organization shit? Are we the baddies? Are they the bad <laughs> Also, I don't necessarily want to call them the bad guys just because they want to bring back Mandalore. And end the Republic? Well, I don't know about the end of the Republic part, but they definitely be looking to protect themselves against the Republic. Aren't you, like, super patriotic for the Republic? Oh, I am. Okay. Anyway... I cover myself in butter and I say, let's do this. Flip that stand to get the butter. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um. Though, understand that I'm patriotic for Trandosha. Not really the Republic, it's just that we're part of the Republic. And I stand to stick by that. Gotcha. I thought it was Hisco. Not Trandosha. Slash begins to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Is Slash is Slash just a random dude inside a Trandoshan suit? <laughs> he sweats harder. Are there, are there chairs nearby? Or am I just imagining things? <laughs> it says a competitive slut snake game. I say I say Slash, do you need to sit down in a chair? I say, I think I need the bathroom real quick. I need to, uh, I need to fix up my suit. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> on your way to the bathroom, Slash, you notice a poster on one of the walls advertising the the, the, the the local snake regionals on the station. No. Oh. Why is it in the actual bathroom? Though? Oh, it's on the way to the bathroom. There's a bunch of posters. Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> did someone just... Put an advertisement in the bathroom? Wait, maybe the sla snake regionals would give us a way in. How? I have no idea, but there's gotta be some reward. Maybe the reward's a tour of the security station. Does it say what the reward is? Uh, it says the reward is a tour of the security station. Are you shitting? <laughs> no joke, that, that's what it says. <laughs> what? <laughs> I I say, okay, I I I swallow a little bit and say, you can do this, Les. Is this a sitcom? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
My God. This is taking such we a We need turn. to throw on a- we need to have a competition and the reward is just the amount of money we need to save the farm. <laughs> I, uh, how do I enter the competition? Uh, it says that you, uh, do it at the exchange embassy. I, I, I look and say, Hey guys, this- the competitive snake competition's gonna give us a tour of the security station if I win. Okay, go, 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 go! We'll support you. We'll we'll cheer you on. Yeah. All right. I uh, I begin to run as my friends give me the energy <laughs> to enter the Slash, competition. Slash, you can do it, Slash, Slash, You can do it. I run all the way over to the exchange embassy. Okay. When you get there, you can notice there's a um there is a desk with uh, a woman, and, and clearly there's a sign next to it that says Snake Regionals Entry. What the fuck? I'm gonna die. If, if Bunny just at the end of this says no, I was just fucking with you, all this was bullshit. <laughs> Sloss wakes up in the bathroom as he realizes he <laughs> accidentally hit his head. <laughs> I Sluss walks up a little nervously. He uh, kind of says, "I, I, <clears throat> I would like to enter the competition." Ah, you're just in time. Actually, there's only one spot left, and it starts this afternoon. <laughs> What's happening? All right. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> Sluss says. All right. Um, what building is it in, or where it is? Where do I? Does the uh, competition take place? They're setting up a staging area just outside the uh, the garages. I uh, and nod, and I begin to head to the garages, and I I wait to enter the competition. This, is... <laughs> this big stage with a bunch of chairs for people to sit on, surrounding oh. the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Terminal set up on the stage. Slash turns to Cedric and Kasari and says, I think I need a hug. I give him a hug. I sort of pat him on the back and say, I know you can do it, mate. It's only Snake. <laughs> this is what you've prepared for your whole, well, for the past month or Couple so. Couple of weeks. Yeah, so, man. At maximum a week. <laughs> Get it in there, man. Sluss nods. Um... <laughs> so, so... <laughs> what is this? <laughs> <laughs> what's... What's going on, buddy? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm... Energized by the help of the power of friendship. I get on yep. stage. I stare at the chair for a few moments. And I sit down. A little ah, nervous. Uh, there's somebody nearby who says, Ah, oh, hello, sir. I, 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 don't, I don't think you're up first today. Oh, uh, uh, okay. I thought you were... I, I, never mind. How many days are there to this competition? <laughs> Do you say that, sir? Yeah. He says, Oh, it's, it's a one-day tournament. It's eight people. It, it, it's single elimination. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, um, can we just wait here while, while, the, while the tournament goes on until he's ready? Absolutely. I mean, the chairs are free. First come, first serve. If you want to go sit down in the audience, and, chairs. Uh, yes, there are hundreds of chairs surrounding. Very close, like there. You could get there in a couple of seconds. Oh, good. So many chairs. Sit, sit, sit. You got the front just, row. Hundred percent. Everything just goes slow. For Slus, he's just like, he's, <laughs> he just looks around. It's just chairs, and they're really big. And he's just like, and I'm just like. Slash, you wanna sit in a chair? Slash says, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> On the way to the bathroom, you find a poster for a karaoke competition where the reward is a or a security office. <laughs> this has gone from mad to even madder. <laughs> <laughs> as, you, as, you, as you run off to the bathroom, Slash, he says, All right, sir, the tournament begins in 30 minutes. Uh-huh. Slash begins to kind of hang over to the toilet. It's like as though 
he, he feels as though he has to throw up. He obviously doesn't have to. You know, the toilet is a kind of chair. Uh, <laughs> well, now that but it's not a complete it. chair. <laughs> Chairs don't have gaping holes in them that shoot water. Yeah, <laughs> not your kind of chairs. Oh no. But uh, Slus takes a deep breath and says, "All right, yeah, Slus." Stop, or am I just going? Um. Can you hear us, buddy? Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 Hello. Bum, bum. Hello. Buddy. Buddy. Oh, oh, we can hear you. Oh. Oh God. Can you hear us, buddy? Hello. Hello, buddy. It must be the Seinfeld music. It broke the game. No, not now. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah we can uh, hear you. <laughs> just making sure that we're not all like in our own islands right now. Nope, it's just Putty and his. Putty? I was in mine for a while. Hey! Hey! So what's going? On? What? What's? Has anything happened since I was gone? Celeste, well, Celeste is taking a mega dump, right? <laughs> <laughs> Celeste is trying to encourage himself, looking in the mirror, and says, "All right, Celeste." This is truly the space station. <laughs> you can do this. This is. This is just snake with chairs, chairs. Chairs. A weird ph <laughs> a phobia you don't even understand how you got. Look, chairs are just chairs. They don't hurt you. They don't overwhelm you. Just try not to look them in the eyes. <laughs> Think of them. Imagine they're Wookiees. There we go. Wookiees, right where they deserve to be. At All the right. bottom. Oh god. <laughs> so many problems I, uh... with that imagery. For one thing, I'm imagining you sitting on Wookiees now. Are we all? While Celeste is in the bathroom, I, I, I think I'm, like, I'm... I'm measuring the competition of what do they look like? They're mostly a bunch of nerdy humans who look like really skinny and, and pale and shit and you know, they don't look particularly impressive. There is this one uh, girl who seems like really practicey. She's got like a little um, like terminal with her that she's clearly playing snake on while the rest are just like trying to calm themselves down. Is anyone dressed like a snake? One person is in a snake costume, but you're not sure if he's in the tournament or just there as a mascot. It's probably just there as a mascot, let's face it. This is so fucking amazing. I, I, are there real snake we competitions need in real life? I don't think there are, but if there are, I want to go to one. <laughs> um, I go to the bathroom to check up on Sless. To the men's bathroom! I just knock on the door. Okay, so that's how this one. I, uh, I say, I'm... I'm coming out. Okay. I'm just trying to get adjusted. Oh my god. I uh I <laughs> I begin <laughs> to take a deep breath, pretend to flush the toilet as though I went to the bathroom and get out. Um and say, "Alright. I'm good." Let's go over I and think. take a seat. Yes. Let's take a seat. On the inferior species. <laughs> what? No, they're chairs. Yes, exactly. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> and begin to equally walk. To be fair, you're feeling a little better now because the crowd is kind of filled up, so the chairs are mostly being sat on. Are you ready, Celeste, to begin your first round snake match? While 
how Celeste considers ready as Celeste will ever be. While Celeste considers that, I check the chairs to make sure they're not sentient beings. Uh, you spend some time meditating on the chairs, and they seem to be chairs. Okay. Yeah, Celeste has lost it. <laughs> so, uh... You won't really realize that now? I think he lost it now. You slice, you sit down with your opponent, you stare him in the eyes. Mm -hmm. It's time for the quarterfinals of the Dog Draft Station! Snake Regional! What the fuck is happening? <laughs> this is too nuts, buddy! We can't come back from this! This game will never be the same again! Slash! Alright. It is time to roll an average computer games check, but I am going to give you one setback. Oh, I already have one. For uh -huh. your stage fright. God, this feels like a uh, one set... I... mm -hmm. Go on. Oh, no, I get more setback. Okay. One setback for your stage fright. Um, one setback for all the nearby chairs, but I'm going to give you an, a boost for the preparation you've done. Okay. Actually, I'm going to spend Destiny. <laughs> Okay. It's it's Sluss's destiny to win this competition. Fuck dude, this is so nuts. Oh hey. <sighs> what an You absolute. ace past your opponent, doubling their score, and you are declared the winner. You think you're you think you probably over your your stage frights with competitive snake now. You conquered that uh -huh. demon as you stand victorious, and you realize that the rush of victory on this on the grand stage of them all is better than the fear of defeat. And you step down and you and you greet your friends as you wait for the semifinals to begin. Wow, we're already in the semifinals. <laughs> it's, it's an eight-man tournament. That was the quarters. I uh, I look at them and I say, you know what? This feels good. It feels so... I'm a winner. You are a winner. Especially Thank at you. Snake. Thank you. Now let's go sit on that inferior species. I'm a little bit weirded out by that, but sure. I'm pretty sure they're made out of wood, Sless. Yeah. Okay. They're made out of wood ease. Wookie, woody, no. That's not Sess down for the semi-finals! <laughs> by the way, saying they're made out of woodies, it sounds exactly like they're made out of a bunch of dicks, so... It does! You stare down your opponent's last, and you begin your process. You no longer have the boost, your adrenaline's starting to wear off, but you only have one setback from the from the chairs now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, difficulty of the check is going to be one challenge and two difficulty. Oh my gosh, I really do need Testy. You gonna flip it again? Yep, we have so much destiny. By the way, why this is ha while this is happening, I go off to buy a champagne bottle for the victory celebration. After some time on the mostly empty uh, stands, there is a, a bottle of champagne you can pick up for twenty credits. You said one challenge to uh, difficulty. Honey. Yes. Okay. Whew. <laughs> Once again. An a storming victory as you move into the the finals but as you're getting off stage you catch a glimpse of the other semi-final and you notice that the, the female snake player is is having one of the best runs you've ever seen that is a that is a score much higher than you've ever seen before can i roll a perception check to see if i notice her like strategy her snake strategy yeah definitely it's gonna be a hard perception check though Yo, know, I bet she runs up and down the corridors and handles it, like, in a very, like, logistical manner. You definitely can tell that she's got some, some craftiness about her, and there's clearly some a method to her madness, but you can't work it out. All right. I take a deep breath and say, all right, Sus, you can win this. All right, it's the finals time. You stare down your final opponent. It's time. For the final snake game. You still have the one setback mm -hmm. from the chairs. Two challenge, yep. one difficulty. Go. Alright. And one last destiny is being spent on this competition.
Oh! oh! Absolutely crushed! Wait, wait, what? Oh, uh, no, you did pu purple instead oh, of green. Oh, whoops. Reroll the entire Is that a complete reroll? Okay. Complete yeah, because yeah, you just... <laughs> Crush yep. and defeat. Oh, oh, <laughs> I feel really bad now. <laughs> oh, I don't know which is worse. Definitely the second one. <laughs> so you're on a roll. You think you're getting there. You think you're getting there and you're like, you know what? Not only am I going to sail to victory, but you know what? I can figure out her strategy in the meantime. You prod, you prod, you have a look. You see what she's doing on the off runs. You That's try and a terrible idea. You try and check is he, is he to learn that while strategy. he's going? Yes. And uh, and you're trying to figure out what it is that makes her so good because you've got this in the bag, but you're starting to, to get caught up on. You're starting to get caught up on and oh 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 she's ahead of you. Oh you worry, you get panicked, you get scared, and as you do, you look into the crowd, the crowd is trying to filter out it's getting late. People aren't really that interested in Snake. They were just here for a good time and they've gotten drunk enough that they can go to a house party now. <laughs> <laughs> and enough of the crowd is filtered out that you can see the chairs. They don't look like Wookie Sless. They look like chairs. <laughs> they look like chairs. <laughs> you start screaming. You start thinking, no, they're Wookies. They're Wookies. They're Wookies. You take out your gun and start shooting the chairs. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> the crowd starts to disperse. Yes! And start running oh away. God. <laughs> so you, you need to run towards them with, with vicious intent, but you oh trip off God. the stage and go <laughs> tumbling into the chairs. You get knocked out and roll a crit injury as you fall off the stage into the chairs. Oh my fucking God! <laughs> oh, Sorry, I'm distracted. Distract, yeah, very clearly distracted and knocked out. You're knocked out as Kasari arrives to witness the scene with a champagne bottle in her hand. I, I feel like I'm so shocked. I actually popped the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> it dribbles over Sless's unconscious body. I'm that... <laughs> this is the funniest that... thing that's ever happened in this game. The organizer seems a little concerned, <laughs> hands the, the, gal the galactic championship invite to the winner and kind of tries to evacuate the scene. Do you know what? Oh my god! That, <laughs> that was the greatest game of Slash <laughs> I've ever seen someone play. <laughs> I have never seen the blaster strategy ever used. <laughs> That badly before. So I the blaster <laughs> strategy. I, 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 I say uh, I say Cedric stay with Slus. Make sure he doesn't die. I'm gonna follow that girl, and I follow the girl. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, okay. So you uh, you follow her as you as you as you see a very chirpy man in a red uniform saying, "You know, the security systems on this station are some of the best in the galaxy. You've picked a great prize." And uh, they're walking down the corridor towards the security station. I I, I, I stop her for a second, and I, I say, "Excuse me, before you go off, could I, could I uh, could I get your autograph?" My autograph? I'm just a stank player. Yeah, but you're the champion. I've won many regionals. I've never. I guess it's finally starting to stack up. Sure, of course. <laughs> I uh, as she goes in for the autograph, I whisper. <laughs> I say, I say, if you get me into that security station with you right now, I'll make it worth your while. Uh, make a negotiation check. I'll say, average. Okay. God, fucking snake. I will not let your sacrifice go to waste, Sless. <laughs> average negotiation? Yes, average negotiation. You still have destiny. You have three. Three? After all that shit, we still have three? Man. You have two, sorry. You have two. two. Oh. You know what? This is, does seem important. I'll flip destiny. That was very good idea on my part. Okay. 
He turns to the chirpy man and says, it was a tour for two, right? You mind if, I, if my friend comes with? And he says, sure! You're in for a treat. The best security in the galaxy. Yes! I can't wait to see it! So, uh, he opens, you, you guys walk all the way across the corridor, they open up the door into, like, a circular room with loads and loads of terminals and kind of monitors that clearly are cameras, and, and he says, So, here you'll see that almost every building on the station has a security camera in it. And you notice that the Utelex complex does indeed have security cameras in it. So they saw us get murdered? Or almost get murdered? They did. These bastards. Um... And, uh, yeah, they, they take you through that. Um, that's the main uh, way we deal with security. You'll see that a lot of the officers here are well-armed, and we can deal with any problems we have. The only rules here on the station are no murder and no stealing. Um, and those are a little bit flexible if you're in good with the red hand, if you know what I mean. Um, Why would he tell us that? <laughs> Man, this is quite the ride. Okay. As the chirpy man says that, you can see the guards looking at him a little weirdly. <laughs> The guards are like, dude, chill the fuck out. Chill the fuck out. <laughs> and here you have, uh, and here you have the world famous tracking system. Oh. Every one of our ships, every one of our weapons, and every piece of our armor has a tracker on it, which are activated from right here in the security station. I, I say, wait, all your armor? Mm-hmm. Why would you put trackers on all that? Just in case it gets stolen. Oh, I see. Gotcha. So. This tracking Or system. someone gets lost going to the bathroom. 50-50. This tracking system seems kind of dangerous, though. What if someone triangulated all the tracking systems, all the tracking beacons at once? It would just scream where the position of the space station is. I suppose, but Shiva has a jammer in her, in her, uh, in her quarters that stops that from happening. It's how oh, we stay hidden. A jammer, you say? Gotcha. I said, <laughs> calming down. <laughs> yeah, I, I, he taps you on the shoulder. Don't worry, the Republic can't find us here. Oh, thank God. I'd hate if they found us. What? They would probably ruin this amazing tour. Hey, Shiva loves snake players. I bet we could get you up there to meet her herself. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. The girl says, I don't know. She seems kind of scary. Yeah, but maybe you make money if you go there. More money uh -huh. than you would have made already. Not that you're making money. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> roll, roll a stealth check. <laughs> With two setbacks because of all the guards die. in the room. I'm gonna die. <laughs> it's this average. Is, this is making fun of Oh. Average, average stealth, two setbacks as all the guards, and I'm gonna upgrade one of the dice, so one challenge, one difficult. Oh, that's not good. This is the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> Fuck. I'm gonna die. This is so good. Okay. Are we ready, boys? Snake. Yes! Oh my god. So you- <laughs> <The> fucking <laughs> luck. You're very stressed. You start to sweat as all the guards are kind of looking at you a little suspiciously. You gain three strain. But she says, yeah, yeah, no, of course you're right. I'd love to meet Shiva. I mean, I've always really wanted to. And she smiles at the chirpy guy and he says, all right, let's take you up there. Yay! <laughs> this is ridiculous. It worked, though. Meanwhile, I'm just patting Sless's, like, <laughs> chest. As he's still unconscious. <laughs> That's you dreaming of a world where you won that tournament. Huh? By the way, if this goes badly, I'm just gonna fucking hack at the jammer and we're gonna run. <laughs> I mean, we're just gonna book it, guys. Just get ready, because I'm gonna start screaming, guys, we need to run. <laughs> From across the space station. <laughs> So he takes you around the long way, heading up here until he goes to the north passageway up here. Um, and eventually takes you to a kind of enclosed building, takes you up to two sets of stairs until you enter a room. And he says, Ah, uh, Lady Shiva, the, the snake champion is here to see you. She and snake says, champion's friend. She turns around and looks at you both and says, Greetings. How was the tournament? Your friend seems to be in awe of her, Kasari, and 
isn't responding. I said, man, it was really exciting. Although, one of the competitors got a little fucking nuts at the end and started shooting the crowd. I yes, think, I hear. I think they had some sort of mental breakdown. Shame to see such a veteran warrior have such strong problems. So, do you... Who... Uh. Look, she already knows it's Sluss. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone probably knew it was Sluss. You're the only <laughs> Trandoshan on the whole fucking station. <laughs> They're like, oh, there's there's the Mando Hunter just going nuts. <laughs> I say, I say, um, so did you sponsor the tournament? I organized for the chairs and the stage the chairs? and the oh, terminals. Yeah. Yeah, the Are chairs. you a fan of Snake? I am a fan of many activities. Uh, I enjoy revelry. Oh, yeah. Well, you should have come out to it. It would have been a lot of fun to have you there. Yes, I uh, I mean that I, I, th I find revelry useful. I do not partake myself. Oh, useful. I've never heard Happy someone talk about parties that way. Most time, parties are just to, you know, pass time. How are they useful? My people have been through a lot over the last few decades. Some time to relax means we lose less of them too. Unfortunate means. Oh, yeah. That makes sense, I suppose. Well, I'm glad that they could have a chance to relax. I mean, it was probably the most exciting snake competition that's literally ever occurred. <laughs> I mean, that, that got crazy. <laughs> Did anybody die? Uh, well, no. Not quite the most exciting on this station, but I'm sure up there. Maybe top five. Other snake competitions have resulted in deaths? Some people are sort losers. So while this conversation is going on, I, I this whole time, I'd like to think I've been occasionally sort of like, in the natural way. That's why I, like, I like to imagine I took the whole conversation to do this. I occasionally, when it, when it seems right, I will like look around the room or like glance over. I'm trying to see if there's a jammer in this room itself. There are terminals lining the wall, but you spend enough time on the Galaxy Plunger, and Merkava was very insistent. In fact, as you think about it, sus suspiciously cons uh, uh, insistent that there be jammers on board the Galaxy Plunger, and so you know what they look like, and you identify the terminal closer to her than it is to you. That is weird. <laughs> I think to myself. Closer to her than, than me. On the left side of the room. I, I sort of, I sort of like kick the girl next to me, like, so, so you want to talk? What do you, this is, woo, exciting, right? <laughs> <laughs> she looks at you a little bit, and you can tell in her eyes, she's like, is this really worth it? <laughs> she starts walking forward and saying, so, uh, I've always been curious about your family. Uh, is, uh, would, would you mind, uh, could you have a drink? And, she, and uh, suspiciously, Shiva begins to turn towards, like, like, clearly a drinks cabinet on the right side of the room, turning her back to you and the terminal. Yes! Is there anyone else in the room watching? No, just you and the girl. Holy shit! I immediately start going over to the terminal. Not really quickly, so I don't make noise, but I just sort of, like, squirrel up like a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so what were you doing again? You were going up to the terminal? I'm squirreling up like a squirrel. <laughs> yeah, I, I go over to the terminal. This was not the session to have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's the perfect session to have a beer. It is, oh, so it is the perfect up, session. You head up to the terminal, and it's very complicated. You you can give it a go, but it's it's going to be a computer check to do it by uh, do it by nimble means. A computer's check to do it by nimble means. You say, okay. That you seems... could certainly plunge your lightsaber into the device. <laughs> Is there a way to do that secretly? No. Depends on how low yuppie the terminal is feeling. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you think that plunging your lightsaber into the terminal wouldn't make that much noise. What happens afterwards? Oh, oh, the sparking. I'm going to... I think it'd be funny if I did that and I was like, Oh man, your terminal just started exploding. I don't know what happened. Uh, no, I'm going to roll the... I'm going to roll the computer's check. How hard is it? going to be uh, daunting Fuck. and oh. you have two setbacks because you don't have long you're under pressure, you're struggling, your hands are sweaty and uh, <laughs> my, my, my sweet arms are heavy <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 
And I'm going to spend destiny. I'm going to spend destiny. So it's going to be one difficulty and three challenge. Uh, sorry, one challenge and three difficulty with two setback. Well, this will be easy, guys. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you only got one shot. Do not miss a chance to go. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Do it. Fuck. <laughs> So As you, uh, kind of, like, mash that keys. I can't do it, or that I do it loudly? <laughs> you, you mash keys, and you're unable to do anything in particular use. And as you type in the fourth attempt at a password, you see an alarm start to flash on the screen. Cut it! Kill the... <laughs> <laughs> you see Shiva turn around and say, What are you doing over there? Nothing! <laughs> <laughs> The lightsaber out, kill the jammer. I just imagine it's just profuse sweat. It's just like, because in real life I'm sweating so much right now. Just like, just like so much sweat. It's like, I can barely type because the sweat I was like slipping on the keys. Oh my god. So, does it look like she was doing something? She was pouring a drink. Oh, does it look like you were doing something? No, does it look like Shiva was doing something? She was pouring a drink and now she's turning, like, to look at you with the drinks in her hands. Guys, what do you think? Should I just go? Should I just go loud? You should go loud. Now, go loud. I'm thinking of grabbing this woman with me. Because I think if I leave her here, one, I wouldn't be able to pay her back. And two, they'll probably kill her. Oh, almost certainly. They're gonna kill her. They'll find a way. But you do have to go in loud. Yeah. Yep. At this point, it's it's either loud or nothing. So, profusely sweating. Just, like, so much sweat. I just... <laughs> I'm uh -huh. <laughs> Too much sweat. I, I, um... I quickly take out my lightsaber and slash the console. Okay, so how, uh, how complete are you? Is it one slash to, uh, sorry, is it one plunge? Or is it a couple slashes trying to, like, chop it up a bit? <coughs> I'm gonna say one very deliberate plunge. Okay, then that, in that case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you make a hard lightsaber check. And I'm gonna add the the, the one setback because you're you know this is something you're used to Holy doing. Sweat. But add... Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's this and the sweat. You say hard. Yeah. Fuck. You you take a, a solid plunge into the into the console and it looks pretty fucked up. Wait. It's like you're gonna need more. So I think I won. Yeah, you do. You think it's disabled? <sighs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I grab the woman by the shoulder and I start running. As you go down the stairs quickly and deliberately, you hear shouting behind you, saying, "Guards, guards!" And as you reach the bottom of the of the of the stairs, there are two bulky Mandalorian men waiting for you with with heavy blaster rifles. You think you can squeeze past, but you're not sure about the girl. I know one way I can squeeze past. I reach out my hand, and I restrain them both. Okay, roll your dice. Oh, this is so exciting. Fuck. We're going loud, Sless. We're going loud. Ah, the one time we're doing the thing Sless wants us to do, he's passed out. Oh, I, I'm still patting and stroking Slash. Cedric, you see as two bulky men with rifles start running across the uh, station towards the... The red hand area. We're going loud! <laughs> okay. Uh, but that doesn't mean kill everyone. I think we should just run. Uh, I gotta uh, start dragging Sless towards the ship. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna roll. So it's just. Through all the shares. <laughs> oh, fuck! What a shitty roll. What an absolute 
crap I'm roll. limited power. Fuck. Um. You can only spin one of them unless you use the dark side. That's what it. That, do I it. think that's do the it now. Yeah, yeah. Because I think um. Yeah, I would. I would. It would take me. It would take me two. It take me th three force points to restrain two of them at once. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, I'm going to. I'm going to restrain one of them, um, and I'm also going to use the control action since I have the extra point for that. Um, so he's going to suffer strain equal to my willpower. So he's going to suffer three strain every time he takes an action. Um, well, for he's going to take a strain for the next turn. Because uh, I'm okay. not going to be committing Force Die to hold him there forever. I'm just going to hope that holding one of them is enough for me to slip by. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm gonna try to... I'm, I'm, I'm literally going to, like, drag her through if it, if it yeah. is required. You definitely... With one restraint, you're definitely able to get past those guys and get out of the building. Yes! As all of the people who are working on weapons and about eight guards are turning to look at the situation. No situation here! <laughs> <laughs> I just start sprinting. Okay, um, there are there are a lot of guards block and and people blocking your way. You think you're agile enough to get past them, but you're not sure about your companion. Fuck. Fuck. What if I threw her over my shoulders? That would make that would require you to make a check to get past all these people, but you could do it. Do I know how hard the check would be? Daunting athletics. I think Kasari would do it. I think Kasari would would would. She's not gonna leave her behind because she got her into the situation. So that'd be really fucking dirty. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're gonna. It's gonna be daunting athletics. I'm gonna add two setback for the. You're still very stressed and, and agitated, and so, this is very hot. I'm so stressed. This is very. This is a very hot area because of all the steel that's going oh, on. So, so that's hot. even more stressing. Even, so it's, it's even more sweat. Yeah, two setback, and I'm upgrading one of the dice. Oh, fuck. So it is one challenge, three difficulty, two setback. One challenge, three difficulty, two setback. And I'm going... Wait, it's okay, wait. Uh, can I spend Destiny? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to upgrade my check as well. And neither of us will flip it. Then it shall be a stalemate, good sir. Okay. We sneak, arms are heavy. Are you guys ready? As ready as always, buddy. Yes! With, uh, with taking one strain, you manage to uh, you manage to just avoid all of them, and you avoid all the incoming blaster fire as you uh, as you get out of the area and uh, behind this corner enough that the uh, the rifles are are, are just not going to be able to hit you at this point. With men chasing behind you, you arrive with your companion at the same time Cedric and Celeste do at your ship, which is open. Go go go! I just start screaming to Cedric. Go! We need to start this ship <coughs> up now. Hey, what I... the engineer says. Really, Celeste is going to be unconscious. Wait, who says that? One of the engineers. They, they, are they are they coming with us? What's happening? No, they ask like, is he is he unconscious? Basically, I say, yeah, he had a bad uh, bad night. He drank too much. Ah, tell that fucker I put it on his tab. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll pay you back. He's good for it. He, he isn't fucking good for it. I know that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's the only choice we have right now. All right, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we jump on. <laughs> They close yeah. it behind you, and uh, you sail off at dawn draft station, I, 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 and I, armed I, with a new traveling companion. I like to think that I maintained a little bit of your reputation there by not telling them the truth about why you're passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, Thanks, they think buddy. you're a heavy drinker, <laughs> and not a psychopath uh -huh. who shoots chairs. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> okay. This... Has been ridiculous. Oh man, this is <sighs> top three sessions. This is so good. Oh man. Slash, add two obligation to your debt. Oh, sorry, okay. Sorry about that, Slash. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably gonna happen either way, but um, 
Hey, maybe we and can... as we fly away towards Naboo, I think it's a little early, but I think that's a good time to end it. Oh, God. Sweat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. Okay. That was something. Well, um, uh, Corey in the house, why don't you take us out the d- today? Uh, well, that was certainly a, a session. Uh, I, I guess um, I guess next week we'll see whether or not uh, where competitive sl- uh, snake games will get us next time. Um, yeah. Uh. Okay. 